This video will teach you five timeless and fundamental tips in order to build a clean and effective home office desk setup. It has taken me over a decade of trials and tribulations to come up with these tips. And I hope that after watching this video, you can avoid the same mistakes I made when trying to cable manage and organize my desk setup. Also, stay tuned until the end where I will give two bonus tips that will help avoid serious life-threatening office workplace injuries. So with the advent of work from home being at least a semi-permanent solution, it's becoming increasingly important to keep a clean, tidy desk set up in an ever-growing, demanding home office environment. Not everyone has the luxury of a dedicated office room where your mess of wires and scattered office accessories isn't so distracting to others. Some of us, like myself, who live in tiny apartments or shared living spaces, would prefer not to be constantly reminded of work when, let's say, you want to relax in the living room. Even if you have a dedicated room for your home office, having a clean and tidy workspace can contribute to more productivity, reduce stress, and allow you to perform at your best. So let's go into the five things you can do to make your home office more organized. By the way, all the home office supplies that I talk about in this video can be found linked in the description down below. So for my first tip, it relates to two timeless essential home office accessories, and that's an under desk cable management tray and a mountable surge protector power bar. That's quite a mouthful. If there's just one thing I want you to take away from this video, it's probably these two items which have saved my life from a chaotic mess of wires. If you're already using this, then that's great. You're already ahead of the pack. You can skip to the next section down below in the timeline. So the under desk cable management tray is quite honestly a game changer, especially for how inexpensive it is. It usually comes in a pack of two, which is great if you want to split the cost of a friend or use both, the more the merrier. This will make tearing down and setting up your home office extremely fast, which can be helpful if you move every year. I can't stress enough how simple a solution like this can make hiding wires, power bars, power bricks so, so easy. Best of all, you don't need to put any effort into tidying up the wires because you actually never see them, as even when you're sitting or even standing. Installation is really simple. Just drill the included screws right into the wood. Make sure that your desk is thick enough. Pilot holes are not necessary and it doesn't need to be perfect, honestly. I recommend planning where you wanna mount it first in case you maybe wanna route some wires or mount other items nearby. As you can see in my example, I mounted mine near the top right of my desk and I also actually drilled a surge protector power bar onto the desk, which is also another great idea to save space. Big warning here, don't make the mistake I made of mounting the under desk tray too far to the edge of your desk. This could prevent you from clamping a monitor stand, which is extremely useful and I'll talk about that later. Speaking of surge protectors, I highly recommend getting a desk or wall mountable surge protector power bar in conjunction with the under desk tray. The two accessories work in tandem to reduce the number of wires having to touch the floor, which overall gives a much cleaner look and it also makes it very easy to operate a standing desk because you don't need to worry about having that extra slack when you move the table up and down because it's all fixed. My recommendation is for the Tron surge protectors, which you can buy on Amazon. They handle a lot of jewels in case of a surge. The plugs are very well spaced out for those annoyingly large power bricks like the MacBook charger, and they offer USB-A chargers, which is extremely convenient. It helps you save the number of ports you have to use. And most importantly, they are certified for US and Canada usage, so you know it's not gonna cause a fire hazard. I will put a link for those power bars in the description. Okay, so moving on to tip number two, and it has to deal with drilling holes. Yes, you heard it. Drilling holes is essential for tip-top cable management, but you can get more creative by mounting a light fixture to save even more space. I live in a tiny apartment, so every little bit of square inch is precious. It's imperative that I'm able to put my desk flush against in towards a corner in order to maximize the space. But there are two annoyances that come with that. First is that you can't put a tall lamp behind the desk because the desk is already flushed against the wall, leaving no space for any other type of furniture. And second, a pet peeve of mine is that when you have black wires hanging off the height, a height adjustable desk, they can easily rub against the, the wall while you move the desk up and down. And this causes all sorts of scuffs and damage to the wall. So if I want my desk just barely touching the wall and I have these kind of wires hanging off the edge of the desk, I wouldn't be able to move my desk really close, like we're talking centimeters away from the wall. And every, every little bit counts, especially when you're in a smaller room. I just can't stress how much utility I get now after having drilled this 1.5 inch hole on my IKEA desk. Now, if your desk already has a hole for cables, then you are one of the lucky ones because most tables, at least cheap, inexpensive tables, don't have holes for cables. 
Now, before you go out and start drilling holes into your desk, I want to give you a few pointers to protect the wood. I highly re recommend to put some painter's tape around the drilling area so that you don't split the wood. Also, you don't want a hole that is too small where cables can't fit, but you also don't want something that's unnecessarily large you know, for, for no reason. So I think 1.5 inches in diameter is the sweet spot. And I was able to route a ton of wires from my monitor, laptop, and, on, and also my PC. Here's a case where I made a mistake. I drilled a hole way too large. I also forgot to use painter's tape to prevent the wood from splitting. In my other office, I did a much better job and it looked professional. I even drilled another hole to route my IKEA lamp through my desk. Yes, you heard it, through the desk to make use of dead space in my tiny apartment. And yes, moving the desk up and down st still totally works. Okay, let's go back to the big hole I made, the big mistake. So to fix this, I ended up covering the atrocious hole with Grove Maid's large desk pad and then routed all the wires behind my MacBook in order, to, in order to hide them. So just be careful when you're drilling holes in your desk, but trust me, it's definitely worth it and you'll do a good job. One quick pro tip when trying to clean the appearance of your messy wires, especially when you have a bulky PC that needs to sit on your floor, is to use cable covers. There's two types of cable covers. One is the one that is made of soft fabric with Velcro to open and close it. And the other one is a little bit more of a rigid plastic cover. Both give you really good protection against smudging wires against your right walls. They also prevent cats or rodents from nibbling on your wires, which could lead to a fire hazard. And of course, they make it everything nice and tidy. So I do recommend getting these. The only con is that sometimes it's a little bit difficult to remove the wire if you want to rearrange your cables and whatnot. Now, as you probably already noticed, I have a Mac and a PC. And unfortunately, since PCs are so bulky and noisy, I have to keep them far away on the floor to save space on my desk and not hear the annoying humming noise it, it generates. This means that I will always have some exposed mess of wires, although I tried my best to tidy them up. Now, if you have a MacBook or a Mac Studio, then you'll virtually have no exposed wires, so lucky you. It really sucks to be a PC owner just so that I can play video games like CSGO. So for my third tip, it has to deal with all the headphones that we have. In today's world, it's not uncommon to have you know, multiple headphones for different types of uh, circumstances, let's say work or play. For example, I have noise canceling headphones for conferences. I have a headset for gaming. I have construction earmuffs for blocking out external noise. And I just have some wireless Bluetooth headphones. Now I know that's a lot and you can probably buy one that does all of it, but I don't have that. Now to properly store that, I would need four different mounts and that would be really expensive and it would require, require a lot of desk space. So what I would propose is to get these headphone stand hangers that are, that are super easy to install, install under your desk. And they can each one can hold up to two large headphones. And you can store other things like cables or even your Oculus Quest controllers. So these are really nifty little tools that you can just simply put underneath your desk and hold all your different types of headphones and, and other types of gear in order to save desk space. Oh, and if you want even more desk space, I highly recommend getting one of these mini stick-on drawers. It uses an adhesive to simply put it on the desk. I can't stress enough how much it is of a joy to use daily. I put all kinds of knickknacks like thumb drives, my pen, my glasses, and even a handy dandy nail clipper in case typing with long nails gets way too annoying. Moving on to tip number four, and it's to get rid of your monitor stand, which takes up a lot of desk space, and use a monitor mount. So by clamping your monitor to your desk, you free up a ton of space that would otherwise be occupied by lar the large feet of your monitor. Another huge advantage with desk-mounted monitors is that you get more ergonomics out of it so that you can position your monitor at the perfect eye level height. You can even rotate it 90 degrees for a portrait mode, which can be handy, especially if you're a coder and you really value vertical screen real estate. So the monitor stand I got was some cheap generic brand off Amazon. And surprisingly, it works very well, especially for how inexpensive it is. It's easy to set up. Uh, it was able to hold my 27 inch monitor, which is pretty heavy. And I was able to, you know, move it around and it was, yeah, it just worked very well overall. I'll leave a link in the description for that specific product. Okay, so let's talk about my fifth and final grand tip. And that is to invest in a desk shelf system. Right now, I'm using Grovemate's desk shelf, which has completely transformed the look and feel of my desk setup. I love the walnut accent color it provides, and it definitely spruces up my boring IKEA desk. If you have a fixed height monitor, this desk shelf solves that problem, especially if you don't want to get a monitor stand. Most importantly, it does a fantastic job at hiding all the messy wires and just giving more room to store accessories like an external hard drive or my speaker. Just by adding some air plants near my monitor, the overall aesthetic has really kind of made my environment feel more calming, relaxing, and this has really helped reduce, you know, stress and made me more productive overall. 
If you want to learn more about Groves Maid's desk shelf, I made a whole video review about it, which I will leave a link in the description. Also, I definitely recommend checking out Grove Maid's line of desktop accessories because their high quality materials and craftsmanship means their products will last a lifetime. And it just, in my opinion, just makes it a worthy buy it for life investment. For example, one of my favorite accessories from Grove Maid is their MacBook dock, which not only looks very luxurious and amazing with its merino wool felt lining, it also just saves a ton of desk space by orienting my MacBook in a vertical position. All right, so those are my top five desk setup tips. Now, I wanna quickly mention two bonus home office tips to boost ergonomics and also kind of avoid really serious workplace injuries. So before we talk about that, I just wanna quickly mention that if you found any of these tips helpful, please do me a favor and give this video a like so it ranks up on YouTube search. It takes a lot of time and energy to produce these videos. So if you wanna support the channel, it would be super appreciated if you just give a like. My first recommendation is to get some kind of smart bulb behind your monitor. Why a smart bulb? Well, we'll talk about that in a second. So the way I mounted the smart bulb behind the monitor is using this really awesome, inexpensive gooseneck lamp that I got from Amazon. And this is perfect for the situation because it fits perfectly behind the, the monitor, doesn't take a lot of space, and it bends in many, any direction you want. I am using a LifeX light, which is a smart bulb, and this allows it to this allows you to adjust the color temperature and brightness based on the current uh, room conditions. So in the daytime, I set the Kelvin temperature to daylight or 5500 Kelvin, and in the evening or night, in order to reduce the number of blue light emissions, which keeps you up at night, I set it to a warmer tone, so 3000 Kelvin. And of course, my monitor inside the operating system like Mac or Windows, you can adjust the uh, blue light temperature as well so that you can match it with the environment. Now, this has honestly helped reduce a lot of eye strain. Before that, it, there was just so much contrast on the background. And by having this backlight, you kind of just make the background less contrasty and then just, you know, it's just easier on your eyes and reduces eye strain. If you still find your desk setup lacking light, I highly recommend investing in one of these inexpensive monitor light bars. The one I have is the Quintus Screen Linear Light Bar, which is a way cheaper version than the BenQ one, which does exactly the same thing for a much less price. This light bar further creates less contrast and promotes better lighting conditions to, to reduce eye strain. It doesn't cause any glare on the monitor and it saves space. And the best part is that it's powered by my monitor's USB. So when I turn off the monitor, the light also turns off as well. Okay, so for my second and last bonus tip to get the best ergonomics, I recommend buying a 3M gel pad that spans the whole length of a full-size keyboard and mouse. It's important to get the full length one and not like maybe just the keyboard or just the mouse because, because you want both your hands to be perfectly aligned and at the same height. Now I've tried so many different wrist pads and you know different sizes and you know ones that are broken out into the keyboard and then the mouse and then just the keyboard only. And I found that they all were just very uncomfortable. This 3M full size wrist pad has honestly the gel, like how the quality of it is just absolutely amazing. And it's super soft and then, you know, it's not, it's at, it's not too high, it's not too low, it's at the perfect height. This super long wrist pad has seriously prevented a really serious condition called repetitive strain injury. This type of injury is not a joke. It can be very debilitating, especially if you have a long career in like coding or a lot of office work where you have to type a lot. So it's very important that you protect, you know, your wrist and that you get proper alignment. So this is very good for your long-term health. Anyways, that's it for this video. I will leave links for all these items I mentioned in the description of this video, so don't forget to check them out. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, or maybe I have a tip that I forgot to mention, please let me know in the comments section down below. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.